I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in the series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping, uh, skipping around a bit as I move along, especially now that I am in the reign of the kings. But right now, we are picking this up in Second Chronicles chapter 11. Now, I have read recently chapter 12 of First Kings, where we have Rehoboam threatening to increase the oppression of the people. The northern tribes rebel against him, and Jeroboam is set up as king of the ten northern tribes. But then Jeroboam turns away from God, establishes his own false religion, and tries in every way to replace God and the true worship, done in fear that Israel will return to uh, Judah. Now we also read in uh, for, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 10, which also covers the dividing of the kingdom. Now we're going to pick this up in chapter 11, which will cover the second same, same as the second half of chapter 12 in First Kings. So let us read this, chapter 11. Rehoboam strengthens the kingdom of Judah, but is forbidden to subdue Israel. Jeroboam leads kingdom of Israel into idolatry. Rehoboam takes many wives and concubines. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he gathered of the house of Judah and Benjamin an hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men, which were warriors to fight against Israel, that he might bring the kingdom again to, to Rehoboam. For the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel and Judah and Benjamin, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren. Return every man to his house, for this thing is done of me. And they obeyed the words of the Lord, and returned from going, to, from going against Jeroboam. And Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem, and built cities for defense in Judah. And first of all, these first four verses, word for word, practically, from First Kings. So just want to mention, you can watch my video on that to get some commentary there, but there's not really much you want to say. Rehoboam tries to maintain the kingdom by force of arms, and Shemaiah says, don't do it. The people say, okay, basically. Let us continue here, verse 5. And Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in, in Judah. He built even Bethlehem and Etam and Tekoa and Bethzur and Shoka and Adullam, and Gath, and Merisha, and Ziph, and, Ador and uh, Adorim, and Lachish, and Azekah, and Zorah, and Ijalon, and Hebron, which are in Judah, and in Benjamin, fenced cities. And he fortified the strongholds, and put captains in them, and store of victuals, and of oil, and wine. And in every, uh, and in every several city he put shields, and spears, and made them exceeding strong, having Judah and Benjamin on his side. Now, if you uh, look at these cities, these are all these cities all already existed. He's not building new cities. He's building fortifications in these cities, and these cities are basically on a line between Judah and now what's the northern kingdom of Israel. So he's building a border guard. That's what he's doing. He, he's building a border defense to protect. Uh, we can't go and conquer them, but we're not going to let them come conquer us either. Verse thirteen. And the priests and Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him out of all their coasts. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from ex executing the priest's office unto the Lord. And he ordained him priests for the, high, for the high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had, bit, which he had made. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their heart to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the Lord God of their fathers. So they strengthened the kingdom of Judah, and made Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, strong three years. For three years they walked in the city of David and Solomon. Let us pause there. This isn't talking about Jeroboam. Remember, Chronicles does not tell us much about the northern kingdom. It mentions it only when it has direct dealings with Judah, because Chronicles is a record of the house or the dynasty of David. So this just mentions because remember in in uh, my in the second half of 1 Kings 12 Jeroboam sets up his golden calves and replaces 
the worship of God, which means he has to kick out all the Levites. He's replacing them with a different priesthood. And so they all flee into, into Jerusalem, to Rehoboam, and where the true uh, religion is. But not just them, but anybody who wants to maintain a true religion, a true faith and worship of the true God, are fleeing down into Judah. Rehoboam set this up to prevent the people from going down into Judah, from prevent people from becoming loyal to Rehoboam. And in so doing, he is driving out those who who would have been faithful. They all made him king. These were men who were, who were loyal to Jeroboam, but now they are fleeing to Rehoboam because of the religious persecution that Jeroboam has instituted. Let us continue, verse 18. And Rehoboam took him uh, Mehalath, the daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David, to wife, and Abihail, the daughter of Eliab, the son of Jesse, which bare him children, Jeish and Shemariah and Zaham, and after her, he took Maacah, the daughter of Absalom, which bare him Abijah, and Ittiah, and Ziha, and, she and Shelemeth. And Rehoboam loved Maacah, the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and concubines, for he took eighteen wives and threescore concubines, and begat twenty and eight sons and threescore daughters. And Rehoboam made Abijah, the son of Maacah, the chief, to be ruler among his brethren, for he thought to make him king. And he dealt wisely and dispersed of all his children throughout all the countries of Judah and Benjamin unto every fenced city, and he gave them victual in abundance, and he, and he desired many wives. So this is how Rehoboam sets up his kingdom. First of all, the, the, uh, the relations there. We have Jer uh, the daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David. So Jeremoth would be his uncle. He's married his cousin. And then Abihail, the daughter of Eliab, the son of Jesse. Now Eliab is David's brother. So that is David's cousin. I mean, that is Samuel's, uh, Solomon's cousin. But Maacah is the daughter of Absalom, who is another one of David's sons, so another one of his first cousins. So he's marrying his cousins here, these three. Of course, he had many wives, 18 wives and 60 concubines. But he sets up Abijah to be his heir because he loves his mother and, you know, she has a special place in his heart. So the son of her has a special place in his heart and he makes him, he's going to make him king. But to appease the rest of his children, because apparently Abijah was not eldest. So to appease the rest of his children, as he acted wisely, what he did is he gave them all land. He gave them each an estate, but spread them out in the countryside. Gave them each their own land, provided them with with food for the rest of their lives, and sought wives for all of his sons. So he set them up, made them, got them families, got them all set, and spread them out so that they couldn't come together. They, they, they couldn't as easily band together against him or Abijah after Abijah becomes king. And in this, he what? This was a very smart thing to do. If you're going to choose one son to be your king, to be your successor, if he's not the eldest, you know, then you got to prevent animosity and hostility from rising up against him. So that was very well done. So we have this. This is how Rehoboam sets up his kingdom. So now we will be returning to First Kings in the next video. So I will see you there.